Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the Boss SP1 Spectrum Pedal. The Spectrum Pedal was one of the first devices released by Roland under the Boss label as part of their so-called traffic light series. I'm recording this lecture as part of my guitar amplification and effects class, but this isn't part of the main lecture material for that class. You can think of this as a bonus video. Mostly I'm making this video because I'm hoping that someone watching this can tell me what the heck kind of filter this is. I've not seen this in any textbooks or in any papers or in any other circuits than the Boss SP1. After I'm done making this video, I'll post my Falstead simulation file to my GitHub for guitar amplification and effects, so you can download it and try it out for yourself. The SP1 schematic is extremely difficult to read. This is one of the schematics that could be cleaned up a lot by using some node notation where you label a node and then use the same node label elsewhere and you recognize that those nodes are connected. For instance, this line all the way through here, left and right, this is just a 4.5 approximate reference voltage created by this set of voltage division resistors here, dividing nine volts in half, essentially. The JFETs are being used as electronic switches, so you can either get the original signal, but that original signal does go through these buffers, as is typical in a BOSS design, or you can get the affected signal. The schematic is made even more difficult to interpret by the fact that they insisted on including all of the controls over here on the right versus putting these potentiometer symbols throughout the schematic wherever it would make most sense in terms of interpreting the signal flow of the circuit. The basic core of the frequency-dependent part of the circuit takes its input through R10 and then the left part of this trim pot, and then we have a feedback resistor that consists of R11 with the right part of this trim pot. So this is in a inverting amplifier configuration, and if the positive terminal was just grounded, it would be a standard inverting op-amp configuration. But of course, the positive input here isn't grounded. And in fact, what breaks my brain about this filter a little bit is that it in fact uses some positive feedback. The output of the amplifier goes through C10 and R14 in series with VR2A, this 100K pot here labeled spectrum and then it loops back this way to the positive terminal. In addition, the positive terminal has two elements connected to the quote-unquote internal ground, namely that 4.5 volt reference voltage, through C8 going to what I would call VR, that reference voltage, that 4.5 volts, but also all the way going back this way through VR2B, a 100K pot that's ganged with VR2A, through another 10K resistor here, this R15, to that 4.5 volt that I would like to call VR. It's really hard to see the way this is drawn. The 3.3 nanofarad capacitor on the left here corresponds to C10, whereas the 3.3 nanofarad capacitor in the middle here corresponds to C8. This 60K resistor in series with this capacitor corresponds to R14 in series with VR2A. The 60K resistor here in parallel with this capacitor corresponds to R15 in series with VR2B. The series combination of these 10K resistors along with these pots allow the musician to change these resistances between 10K and 110K. Here I've set them to 60K to have a number in between. Let's focus on this RC network for a moment. Let's briefly call the left side of this capacitor the input, and this junction of these resistors and this capacitor the output. This forms a bandpass filter with a transfer function that has a magnitude peak of 1 over 2 pi RC. You can easily see this must be a bandpass filter by remembering that at high frequencies, capacitors look like shorts, 
so the output would be shorted ground. And at low frequencies, capacitors look like open circuits, so none of the signal is getting through, and the output is just going to see this resistance to ground. Okay, so let's compute the peak of this RC network. So I have 1 over 2 pi, 3.3 e to the minus 9 for nano, and 60 e3 for kilo, and that gives me 803 hertz. Let's see what I get if I change the frequency here to 803 hertz. All right, so I have an input of 100 millivolts and an output of something like 2.2 volts. Okay, let's try dropping the frequency to 700 hertz. When I do that, the output winds up dropping to 1.45 volts. All right, so that's a smaller voltage. What about if we use a higher voltage, like 900? Is it still lower than 2.2 something? Let's see, so it's 1.9 something, which is smaller than the 2.2 something that we had when I put in 803 hertz. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's plausible that that's the peak. Let's look at what the peak frequency is for the other resistor value extremes. If we turn the pot all the way so that it's basically a zero ohm resistor and we only have that 10 kilo ohm resistor in the circuit, well, I got 4.8 kilohertz. And then what about if we go the other direction and turn the pot so it's at max resistance, I would have 110 kilohertz. That's 438 hertz. And according to the BOSS SP1 instructions, by turning the spectrum knob, you can change the emphasis from 500 hertz to 5 kilohertz. So I'll say that's pretty close. Now, it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility to make a filter that uses positive feedback. After all, the Salenkey filter uses positive feedback as part of its bootstrapping trick. But I've never seen this anyplace else except for this particular pedal. I've not seen the circuit in any papers or any textbooks or any lectures I've seen or any online resources. So, if you have seen this somewhere, please leave a comment below. I have seen a filter with a similar spirit in the SSL equalizer circuit. It also uses positive feedback, probably to sharpen the peak, except instead of having its RC components in the positive feedback loop, it has the high-pass portion in the input to the negative terminal of the op-amp and the low-pass portion in the feedback loop. And I haven't seen this topology anywhere except for the SSL equalizer. So if you've seen this somewhere else, let me know in the comments below also. Now, this filter does resemble something that's well known, but it's not a filter. It's actually an oscillator. This resembles something called the Winebridge oscillator. The Winebridge oscillator has a particularly famous implementation in the Hewlett Packard 200A. Now, if we take a look at that, the incandescent bulb here, that's just acting as sort of an adaptive resistor. Imagine you replaced it with a resistor. So basically, to make that BOSS SP1 circuit, basically all we do is take this side of the resistor and apply the input to it instead of grounding it, and then we make sure this is set up so that it doesn't actually oscillate. My attempts to Google search on Winebridge filter didn't turn up anything useful as far as identifying its use as a filter because it just gave references to this filter that's used in the feedback loop of the Winebridge oscillator. I could not find any references to actually using this kind of circuit as a filter. So if you know of any, please let me know. As an aside, I earlier mentioned that this passive subfilter that's part of the bigger filter structure has a peak frequency of 1 over RC and radians per second. I got that from this bit of the web page on Wikipedia that includes this analysis of what they call the frequency determining network. So if you take this transfer function and divide through by C squared R squared to get the S squared by itself, you wind up with a 1 over R squared C squared over here. So you, taking the square root of that, you get 1 over RC.